Well, President Obama's stimulus package last year carved out almost $80 billion for clean energy projects. DOE says most of that has trickled down to state and local governments that are now handing it out for real projects. The line of businesses vying for funding is growing. Some African-American business leaders are calling on their community to step up before they get left behind. Clean Skies' Dee Bambani has that story. D. That's right. The idea is that black-owned businesses need to get in on this new energy revolution that will help bring prosperity to their communities. Black-owned businesses are the fastest growing minority business group in the country, growing 45 percent in the past five years alone. Now, while most of those businesses are not in the energy sector, some business leaders in the black business community say they should be. Today, Black Enterprise Magazine hosted a forum in Washington it dubbed a conversation on energy. Leaders from Area Energy, NRG, and Entergy talked about barriers to developing the clean energy world. Entergy New Orleans president and CEO Roderick West said economics will determine if there is an energy revolution. He said people will not pay higher prices for renewable electricity, biofuels, or energy infrastructure if the alternative, doing nothing, costs less. Area's president and CEO Gardy Bannister said the clean energy sector will grow if renewables don't attempt to replace fossil fuels. His company produces 30 percent of California's oil. He said the company uses natural gas to create steam for enhanced oil recovery, but could switch to biomass and maybe even solar in the future. Stephanie Owens, EPA's director in the Office of Public Outreach, told the forum the government plans to invest $150 billion over the next decade on clean energy technologies. She pointed to the $2.3 billion in tax credits for clean energy manufacturers awarded just last week as the kind of program that can help businesses jump into the clean energy economy. Earl Graves Jr., the magazine's president and CEO, said Obama's clean energy strategy is, his words, rich with opportunity for African-American businesses that would otherwise not be able to enter into this new energy realm. This is certainly new territory for a lot of businesses, and I don't think that we have done a good job as an administration in doing the kinds of things that we're doing today to talk about exactly what we're doing and how more businesses can get involved. So I think it's incumbent upon us and again working with some of our federal partners to make sure that we more clearly illustrate what those mechanisms are for businesses to be more engaged. I think that the barrier to entry of course always is, an, is capital. Uh, so to the degree that the government can make capital available to minority-owned firms so they can get in on the businesses and not just be a second-tier or uh, third-tier supplier will be important. Now, this is not the first time we've heard that black businesses could start entering the energy sector in large numbers. Last year, the Congressional Black Caucus said African Americans have been largely outside of the energy arena, but could have a new place in this new green economy. They wanted part of the stimulus earmark to help black-owned businesses enter fields like energy infrastructure or transport, for example. Susan? So, the speaker's concern there about a high cost of alternative energies, did EPA address that? Well, Stephanie Owens did say we would be saved in the way of security. She said the 2001 energy path focused on fossil fuels to the detriment of the country. Oil prices skyrocketed to more than $100 a barrel for oil. There were no alternatives. And that's not the path this country needs to take, she said. But she said that the country could be saved from falling into more unemployment. Um, she said that 80,000 weather weatherization jobs would cre be created and 17,000 new manufacturing jobs. All right, Dee Bambani, thank you.